I know we're just now starting the second week of the year, but it's already looking like 2024 might shape up to be the year of the very weird guy. We're gonna let our freak flags fly in That's... 2024. Yeah, because we already have at least two brand new types of guy, and it's safe to say that it's no coincidence that both of them are from Alabama. Yeah, that is odd. Mm -hmm. What's going on and, down there? And around the same area, like the Birmingham area. Uh, I was about to say there must be something in the water, but there probably is. there's a guy in the water. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, there's one. Yeah, the, the, we'll get to the newest guy, the guy trapped in a giant vase, uh, in just a second. But first, we have to update you on a story that was breaking while we were filming the most recent episode of Weekly Weird News. Because, unfortunately for everybody's eyeballs, the guy who swam around inside of a Bass Pro Shop aquarium, that story has only gotten worse. At the time, we all we had was text. Yeah, just the headline. We, did, we just had uh, written information. Mm -hmm. We did not have first-hand video evidence. No, from different angles and everything. And, and honestly, look, I, you got to assume that this was a complete and total mental break because there's no other way to explain it. So, and and for censorship pers or like. Uh, YouTube purposes, we can't show the video, though there's not much to show, as you might be aware. As you many have, uh, yeah, seen. But yeah, it, it is definitely bizarre that he seemed to specifically seek out this Bass Pro Shop and this aquarium to go skinny dipping in. It's a great aquarium. I mean, it is beautiful. He's probably been to that Bass Pro Shop so many times. Been like, God, I wish I could just climb in there with the fish. Finally, his intrusive thoughts. Won. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he went skinny dipping in it. Uh, did a cannonball. Refused any attempts from security to uh, get out safely, and then fell over the edge. Yeah, like a like a fish falling out of an aquarium, yeah. just sort of plop. Anyway, after the headlines started making their rounds last Friday, videos started popping up on social media, and as we said previously, uh, this was no pool. This was an aquarium, which gave onlookers a full, unobstructed view at just everything that was going on below the surface of the water. Or wasn't going. Yeah. <laughs> After a few minutes in the water and a, and a cannonball or two for good measure, the guy attempted to climb out of the aquarium and he uh, just knocked himself the fuck out. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get into the, the screen grab that belongs in a museum and is being touted as an omen for the coming year, let's get a few more of the details about this incident from local outlet AL.com. A man is in custody and en route to a hospital for mental health treatment after he jumped naked into the massive aquarium at the Bass Pro Shop Leeds Thursday night. The 42-year-old man was reported to be acting erratically and drove a vehicle into a pole in the store parking lot. After the crash, he got out of his vehicle, took off his clothes, ran into the Bass Pro Shop, and jumped into the aquarium. And they add that video taken by bystanders showed the man do a cannonball into the aquarium and later stand under the waterfall. That also feels good. I bet it felt great. Uh huh. As two Leeds police officers began to walk up the stairs, the man exited the water, yelled something to the officers, and then dove back into the water. He continued to shout something to the officers before he climbed over the side of the aquarium and dropped to the concrete floor below, appearing to have been knocked out by the fall. Officers handcuffed the man, who then woke up and began to try to struggle. Someone covered him with a blanket as officers took him from the store. Irwin said the man was only in the water for about five minutes before officers arrived. He was taken to a hospital for a mental evaluation and then booked into the St. Clair County Jail. And again, not going to show video or photos where, you can, out there. where you can see the guy's face especially, uh, but the moment that has been immortalized by the internet was after he'd knocked himself out while attempting to escape from the aquarium and fell to the ground where he lay naked and splayed upon the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it's, it's become a meme format, but my favorite one, especially because I just played the game, yeah. is, is the the opening shot from Disco Elysium. Mm -hmm. But it's it's him splayed out on the floor. Mm -hmm. it was, uh, I, I understood that reference. Yeah. But yeah, as far as moments from this incident go, the fact that it's from a distance, there's no full frontal, and the guy is unidentifiable from the image itself, which will far outlive the news cycle it spawned from. It's at least on the tamer side of how the internet reacted to the entire debacle. Yeah. The the, the commentary on the guys. Penis, which he cannot control, and it was probably a very it, cold aquarium. It is the last thing that you're really allowed to be a fucking dick about. A thing that people have no real control over. Yeah. It. it I do find it interesting that a, a trend I've noticed over many, many years of uh, seeing public indecency videos uh, on the internet is... Uh, it's always the it's small always dicks. The, it's the guys with the small dicks that seem to love getting uh, getting naked in public. 
Yeah. I don't know what's about what that is, but you know, even, good for them. Even years ago at Coachella, I saw... Yeah, there was I, the Coachella guy. I saw the naked guy in Coachella, and then he got tased. He also had uh, yeah. nothing going on down and there. And then there was the It's a Small World guy, I believe, uh, also had uh, not much going on down no. there. It's I don't know what it is. But yeah. It's a mixture of drugs, People were being, cold weather, <laughs> the water. The pool was freezing cold, <laughs> yeah. guys. Uh, but uh, yeah, people were comparing the image to Renaissance paintings. Uh, the Peter Griffin death pose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lucifer falling from heaven. The Yamucha death pose from Dragon Ball. And, yeah, our personal favorite, the opening scene from the game Disco Elysium. It, it was perfect. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. I mean... <laughs> Among many others. But now let's turn our attention to a different type of guy. A guy who is way more fun to openly mock because he appeared to simply be the funny guy of his group. Every group's got to go, oh, what's he going to do next? Yeah. Get a load of this guy. Uh, I mean, you're pointing at me, but I was the funny guy uh, in so many hey, Rick, escapades. do something crazy. I This could have been me uh, many years ago. Oh, my God. Especially how, during how did my you come drink, up with this shit? Especially during my drinking days. Oh, Absolutely. my God. Can you yeah. believe it? Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah. He, this was a party. It looks, uh, everyone appears to be under the influence of alcohol. And, yeah, when you're the funny guy and you get a few drinks in you and, and there's, the, the, there's peer pressure around you, everyone's like, hey, be funny. Yeah. Uh, or you want to surprise everyone with yeah. something funny. Like, They're, hey. Oh, wait till they get a load of this. <laughs> yeah, everyone's going to love it. But, yeah. We're talking about the guy who got himself stuck in a giant vase. and started, right. Ooh, Elliot. And started panicking because, uh, well, he got in, but he couldn't get out. No. And just to be clear... Because there were also people in the video who seemed to be a bit confused as to exactly how this guy was stuck. Yeah, how, how do you get in if he can't get out? Well, it's because he got his knees jammed up against the inside of the vase or uh, the urn. Large is, decorative urn. Which is how some outlets and people are referring to the I thing. Mean, I did a, uh, if he hadn't managed to get out of it, it would be an urn because he'd be inside it and he'd be dead. Yes. I did for clarity. And look, I'm no artist. In fact, I am terrible at drawing, okay. but I did try my best. It, it, this rivals the, uh, the leprechaun in Louisiana, <laughs> but uh, I, I try to do my best to represent how exactly this okay. guy got stuck. Uh, I'll scan it in when I get home, but uh, there oh, it is yeah, right there. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. He's got his butt. It's uh, not bad. Butt, butt pressed against the one side, knees pressed against over here, and uh, obviously in in he's distress. Got, yeah, he's yeah. in the stress pose. I'll, I'll right. scan that in now, so you can see Now it drop Blippy taking a <laughs> shit on his friend. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yes, we're going to call, for the remainder of this, we're going to, uh, unless otherwise noted by people who were there describing uh -huh. it, we're going to call it a vase or a vase or a pot because, you know. Spittoon. <laughs> Because, yeah, I, I personally immediately just associate the term with, uh, uh, urn with the thing that you keep the ashes of dead relatives in. Yeah. Uh -huh. So anyways, this guy crawled into a big vase as a goof and got stuck, leading to some incredible and hilarious footage of the debacle, which was tirelessly documented and shared by one of our favorite Twitter accounts at the Waffle House, a.k.a. Christy Yamaguchi Main. Now, to be clear, uh, again, this, this took place during a New Year's party, so while it technically took place in 2023, it didn't go viral until a few days into 2024. So it does still count as a new type of guy for yeah. this year. All right, before, it could have been after midnight. We don't know. No, they, it was posted. The original no. uh, uh, posts from the person that was there were December 31st. So okay. So this they weren't even as drunk as possible. Yeah, yet, is what we're saying. But before we start breaking all of this down, here is the video footage of the guy. Connor Paget getting stuck in a giant vase. <laughs> I'm doing everything I fucking can! God damn it! My sweater off before I took my belt off and I didn't do shit. <laughs> I'm not. You're not going to be able to get out. You're going to be there the rest of Y'all going to have to find a fucking hammer. We'll get you out. We are not breaking the pot. I'll go down. Who are you? You're going to sleep in the pot. Stand up. 
Help, get me out of this giant vault. Don't you think I'm trying? Call Con the fire department. Connor, what are you doing? Yeah, this video has it all. Connor is panicking. Everyone around him is either laughing at his misfortune or attempting to give advice on how he can free himself. But everything's lost in an absolute cacophony of voices and general chaos. Half the people don't seem to understand how he's stuck and are simply telling him to stand up. Stupid. <laughs> A few people are trying to calm him down. Everyone seems to be inebriated. They all seem to be kind of preppy and douchey, though... I, I don't know. It is a, it's a party. Yeah. It's a fancy New Year's party. Uh, it might have been like, well, let's get all dressed up. In the South. Was this at a plantation? Do we know that? I, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, it, the the uh, brown leather shoes with no socks. Yeah. So that's another type of guy. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people just stay, sort of standing around and witnessing it play out, which is, that's the right move. Yeah. You only get an incredible moment like this playing out in front of you like three, maybe four or five times in your life. <laughs> so best to just sit back, sip on your drink, and enjoy the show. Mm -hmm. Connor attempts to retake control of the situation by blurting out that he's doing everything he fucking can, which only makes things worse. <laughs> Me meanwhile, he looks absolutely ridiculous. Like the character from Bennett Foddy's Getting Over It, where you, you, you hopelessly attempt to climb with just a sledgehammer. It's like the co-op game, yeah. except uh, you're, you're trying to get up a, a mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's half man, half vase, and 100% dumb as hell. Yeah, and at this point you're saying, why not just break him out of it? And you're right. But that's a last ditch effort, because apparently this vase was outrageously expensive. I mean, large pottery is not cheap. No, it's certainly... I would put bare minimum a couple hundred dollars yeah, just based yeah. on the materials and uh, presumably the kiln, the size yeah. of the kiln and the uh, amount of energy that, that it would take. That expensive. Even just like the big terracotta ones that like people put trees in, those are like very expensive. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, these folks, they would have a hell of a time explaining this charge to their parents who they clearly all get their money from. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe they could just say Connor did something stupid again and their parents would be like, Oh, yeah, that's Connor. Sounds like Connor. Was it funny, at least? It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they did end up smashing him out of it, but we are getting ahead of ourselves. Let's enjoy it just a bit more. Let's savor this moment. There was one user at Casual Thursday who appeared to have been at the party and was giving a, a short play-by-play. -play. So let's read from that, because that's, that's an eyewitness account. Yeah. It goes through everything. We have a man stuck in a decorative urn at this Mountain Brook house party. I repeat, we have a drunk man stuck in a large decorative urn at this Mountain Brook house party. Details as they develop. <laughs> he was laughing at first, but now he's starting to get upset. <laughs> the women are trying to comfort him. There is talk of attempting to break the urn. The host has dispatched a friend to retrieve his sledgehammer. My view is obscured by the gathering crowd, but I can hear the tinkering of a hammer and a makeshift screwdriver chisel mixed with the frustrated, panicked grunts of the captive. There's a cracking sound and the crowd cheers. He is free. The urn has been shattered and our hero emerges unscathed. Our long national nightmare <laughs> is over. People are now discussing the cost of the shattered urn. I'm hearing prices ranging from $500 to as high as 3,000 US American dollars. Urn guy is up and moving around, but now without his pants, which were apparently lost or damaged in the incident. Everyone seems fine with this. He wants a cigarette. Can I get a fucking cigarette? Oh my God. What a debacle. Did you see me in the urn? <laughs> Pretty funny, huh? I'm the, I'm the urn guy now. Everybody's going to be talking about this forever. I've made my mark. Huh. So, yeah, a few hours later, more videos were acquired by Waffle House, which showed Connor resigned to his fate of living out the rest of his life as half man, half boss. He, they, they put him back up to where he's like, the, the, yeah, the base just... is sitting upright. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Fine. call the fire department if you want me out of here. Yeah, finding a comfortable, I guess, sitting position and then exclaiming, I'm stuck, y'all gonna have to find a fucking hammer. <laughs> Eventually everyone gave up or got, got tired of laughing at him, so they just found a hammer and delicately started chiseling him out of his predicament. Honestly, they chipped away at the vase so softly, you kind of have to hand it to them. I mean, they took a lot of tender loving care with this. I would have just, like, breaking a piggy bank. It, as the previously the funny, goofy guy of the group, uh, I have retired from that role. Uh, if, if it were some of my friends that I grew up with being tasked with freeing me, they would have smashed it with a sledgehammer. Or, I immediately thought of this, they would have picked me rolled up you. <laughs> inside uh, the vase and smashed me on the ground. Or, yeah, rolled me somewhere. Yeah. But Florida has no hills, so. All right. 
Yeah, they would have they, they would have gotten two or three people and they would have picked me up and dropped me. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it's like getting bullied. And that's why you got to be the funny guy to get yourself out of bully situations. Uh-huh. I'd say but, step one is don't get inside of a giant boss. Yeah, well, when you're the funny guy, when you're the court jester, trying to hang with the cool kids by being goofy, sometimes you get yourself into a sticky situation. Yeah. Uh, anyways, you, you may say I have bad friends, and I, and I did, but uh, also it is the quickest and funniest way to be freed. Yeah. That's called Smash. committing to the bit. Yeah. As for Connor, though, apparently he is enjoying his newfound fame before almost certainly turning into a milkshake duck. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, is apparently uh, appearing on Waffle House's podcast, so make sure you follow their account for more. Links are always down in the description. Now, our next weird guy, yes, Mr. President, a third weird guy, uh, is actually a police officer from Minnesota who simply got a little too wild with it while testing out a new drug detecting device. And now he's probably living in a nightmare of mockery from his fellow officers and is certainly being made fun of online after this video made its way to Twitter because... In a news report about cops finding ways to test drivers for driving under the influence of drugs instead of alcohol, uh, they cut to some B-roll of one of the cops demonstrating how the process works. And, uh, well, here, just just get a a load of this guy. And then scrub it around like a toothbrush on the inside of your cheek. That's a new drug detecting test that Minnesota law enforcement could ask a driver to take. Drug-impaired driving. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, make sure you get it in there, buddy. Make sure you get it in there. Hell yeah! Yeah. Mm, yeah, you gotta. You know he's he's really getting that getting that swab on. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he's not having fun this week. In fact, it really looks like the guys behind him have already started making fun of him in uh, just a few seconds after he tests out the new product because they're laughing pretty hard. And from their viewing angle, it definitely looked like he was shoving a cylindrical <laughs> object into and out of his mouth rapidly, yeah. repeatedly, mm-hmm. just in and out, in and out. You know. Yeah. You get it. Mm-hmm. But speaking of weird guys, I mean, this this guy isn't new at all. But it appears as though Roger Stone might be in some seriously deep trouble. And the implications of what he's being accused of, and apparently the audio that goes along with it, could send shockwaves throughout the Republican Party because according to a recent report and newly leaked audio, Roger Stone seems pretty fucking interested in having his political opponents assassinated just a few weeks before the now infamous 2020 presidential election. Hmm. Yeah. And this is actually legitimately insane. So we're just going to quote directly from the source, with, which is Mediate. And uh, the news org, they're the news org that published the story and obtained the audio of Roger Stone. Weeks before the 2020 presidential election, infamous political operative Roger Stone sat across from his associate, Sal Greco, at a restaurant in Florida. At the time, Greco was an NYPD cop working security for Stone on the side. Their conversation at Cafe Europa in Fort Lauderdale focused on two House Democrats for whom Stone harbors particular animosity, Jerry Nadler and Eric Swalwell. In audio of the conversation obtained exclusively by Mediaite, Stone made threatening comments about the two lawmakers. It's time to do it, Stone told Greco. Let's go find Swalwell. It's time to do it. Then we'll see how brave the rest of them are. It's time to do it. It's either Nadler or Swalwell has to die before the election. They need to get the message. Let's go find Swalwell and get this over with. I'm just not putting up with this shit anymore. Uh, A source familiar with the discussion told Mediaite they believe Stone's remarks were serious. It was definitely concerning that he was constantly planning violence with an NYPD officer and other militia groups, the source said. Both Nadler and Swalwell serve on the House Judiciary Committee. At the time of the Cafe Europa conversation, Nadler had announced the committee would be investigating then-President Donald Trump's decision to commute Stone's sentence after he was convicted of federal crimes in special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia probe. In response to a request for comment on the remarks aimed at Swalwell and Nadler, Stone said, Total nonsense. I've never said anything of the kind. More AI manipulation. You asked me to respond to audios that you don't let me hear and you don't identify a source for. Absurd. Greco did not deny the comments, but said in a text to Mediaite, I don't think your reader is interested in ancient political fodder. Hmm. It's only... It's been... Three and a half years? Yeah, come on. Not even three and a half years? Let sleeping dogs lie, you know. Uh, Why are we we digging this all up? Just just a casual conversation about uh, assassinating political opponents. Uh, People who are actively serving in government. They had a heated politics moment. It's fine. You know, he didn't mean it. Yeah. Stone had a gamer moment. It is hilarious, too, because, like, if this was anyone else, 
there'd be some plausible deniability, but like Roger Stone has just like six decades of being a giant piece of shit yeah. on his uh, resume. Mm -hmm. So, and so, literally yeah, it seems like something he would literally do. use the exact words in the conversation. Yeah, we have to murder this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Well, yeah, come on, you're like amateur hour. You got to be like, we gotta. We gotta fix our little. We gotta fix our little Eric Swalwell it's, problem. It if sounded you know what I'm like he was about. doing that at first, and then was like, "I don't think you're yeah. getting the picture." We have. To right, I'm cutting that out of the episode. <laughs> well, no, leave it in. Well, you see, you see what uh -oh. happens, <laughs> officer. Anyways, uh, we have more weird guys coming up in just a moment, and we're gonna try to keep things a little lighter than that story to close out the second half of the show. Maybe a story about space aliens invading a Florida shopping mall to cheer everyone up. Can you imagine traveling across the entire galaxy? To, to end up in Miami? Yeah, uh, mall in Florida. Yeah. But first, let's take a second to thank today's sponsor for supporting the show and making sure that all the normal guys out there have faces that are smooth and beautiful. Henson Shaving. Uh, yes, Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the International Space Station and Mars Rover, and now they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. Razor blades are like diving boards. The longer the board, the more the wobble. The more the wobble, the more nicks, cuts, and scrapes. A bad shave isn't a blade problem, it's an extension problem. By using aerospace-grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of a human hair. That means a secure and stable blade with a vibration-free shave. But wait, it gets better. Mm -hmm. The razor has built-in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. Seriously, Henson Shaving wants the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no planned obsolescence. The Henson razor works with standard dual-edged blades to give you that old-school shave with the benefits of new-school tech. Once you own a Henson razor, it's only about 3 to $5 per year to replace the blades. Honestly, we love this razor mainly because it's uh, infinitely reusable. I, I mean, the blades alone. It's You just go get standard blades yeah, and you just, just pop them in there. Boop. Your yeah. grandpa had it all figured out. And then they ruined they everything. They over-engineered everything. Henson's bringing it back. Yeah. 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 They get the job done very well, and you're not contributing to more plastic pollution in the process. Mm -hmm. Also, the handle has a good weight to it. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculously cheap to refill it over time. Plus, it's always fun to reject modernity and embrace tradition. That's right in a non-problematic way. Mm -hmm. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash ITDaily to pick the razor for you and use code ITDaily and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That is 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash ITDaily and use code ITDaily. All right, back to the news, and before we get into the aliens and UFO news, which, spoiler alert, obviously all bullshit cooked, cooked up by conspiracy weirdos on Twitter and TikTok. No basis in reality. I want to believe. But th that's a whole separate group of other guys who uh, saw one thing and decided to turn it into a complete yeah. they just, absurd conspiracy theory. They want theory. to believe. Yeah. Anyways, let's talk instead about something very real and very funny that happened recently. When a comedian got in trouble with his employer over some of his material, which resulted in him getting fired, which is not funny. But then the employer had to be forced to rehire this employee because a third party arbitrator found that his jokes were in fact funny. Though some did have to be removed from social media because they could violate the company's social media policy. Still had to rehire. Yeah, I don't, dun, care. Dun, I don't care who you are, that's funny. Yeah. They, they, they fired a guy, then they had to give him his job back because someone, someone else outside of it had analyzed his routine and found his jokes to be humorous. I mean, it's incredible stuff. The man in question is comedian Jad Slayman, whose day job was with WHYY. Why? An NPR member station in Philadelphia. And here's Vice with more on this. And honestly, one of the quotes from Slayman himself uh, is about the return is incredible. It's, it's awesome. A reporter who was fired last year when his employer found clips of his stand-up comedy online must be reinstated because his jokes are funny. A third-party arbitrator has ruled. Slayman had spent five years as a reporter at The Pulse, a health and science radio broadcast produced by WHYY. However, after senior management found clips of his stand-up comedy routines that he had posted on Instagram, clips the company alleged were egregious with sexual connotations, racial connotations, and misogynistic information, according to the arbitration case document Sleeman posted online, 
He was fired last January. They cut off my health insurance same day, despite the fact they know I have multiple sclerosis and rely on very expensive drugs to walk, Slayman told Motherboard on Wednesday. They also went and deleted all my work from the site, every single possible clip I could try to use to get a job. Yeah, that, referencing the work that he did for yeah. the radio broadcaster. Uh, Slayman's comedy focused on his experiences as an Arab American, raised in a Muslim family, his experience in the U.S. Marine Corps, and his reporting while he was in the Middle East including embedding with Syrian opposition fighters and covering ISIS in Iraq, the arbitration document states. It includes written samples of nine jokes that Sleeman had posted as clips on Instagram, which, as part of the arbitration agreement, he has since removed from his page. One joke is listed with the title, Kind of Racist. I work at one of these places that's so woke it's kind of racist, the joke reads in part. Like this lady asked my boss, she's like, yo, does Jack consider himself a person of color? Because she was making a list of us. Fucking hell, sick. All right, I get to be in this lady's brown dude Pokedex. <laughs> uh, Sleeman, who was represented by SAG after grievance lawyers, argued that he had been terminated without due process. It continues. The arbitrator performed an in-depth analysis of the nine comedy samples to determine whether they were in violation of this reading of the policy. Though parts of some jokes were deemed potentially inflammatory, many were found to be either funny or an astute critique of some institution of power of kind of racist, the arbitrator wrote that it was a powerful condemnation, in a funny way, of what Slayman calls corporatized racial consciousness. The arbitrator was not a fan across the board. They found that one joke was insightful, principled, and serious, but not very funny. Slayman said he was disappointed by this review. The arbitrator ordered on December 29th that Slayman be reinstated in full. Mm -hmm. And here's the best part of the entire story. Slayman said he expects to start working again in the coming week, unless the company decides to appeal the arbitration decision. I'm going to walk in there like fucking Vince McMahon, he said, laughing. I'm very curious to see how much they spent. Dwayne Morris is some of the biggest in the country. They tried their best. They called me every name in the book. They cut off my health insurance. They deleted all of my fucking stories, which like, what the fuck? And then they still lost. People keep asking, is it going to be weird going back? I'm like, yeah, for them. That is definitely going to be an awkward situation for... Hey! Yeah. I'm back! All right, now on to the aliens. No. No, there were no aliens at a Florida shopping mall last week. And no, the police were not dispatched to take down a 10-foot-tall gray alien that was terrorizing shoppers. <laughs> people online are just <laughs> clinically insane. This is so stupid. And one or two people claiming that they see an alien in helicopter footage sparked a deluge of conspiracy theories, and other weirdos working backwards to somehow prove their claims. Yeah. People were just making up footage, pulling things from other, like, clearly edited stuff, stuff that has nothing to do with this, like being like, and here's footage from inside. Yeah. A portal to the other world has opened up. Uh, I mean, we'll show the video, but there's no point. You can't, first of all, you can't see anything. Yeah. Unless you go to, like, which some people did, frame by frame. But even when you do that, it's just two people walking side by side with shadows being cast by lights. Like, it is so obvious to anyone who yeah. isn't trying to see yeah. what they're trying to see. It's just footage of a heavy police presence at a Miami area mall because a shooting was reported there. Luckily, it only apparently turned out to be nothing more than a bunch of kids lighting off fireworks, but that's why there were tons of police cars there. They thought it was an active shooter. The image that people seem to think is a giant alien the, the ones that are even zoomed in, I, I looked to see what people were even talking about, and it's just two normal-sized people walking closely with each other. The and, old uh, two kids stacked on top of each other in a trench coat. <laughs> but they're side by side yeah. instead. I saw the tallest man in the world the other day. He was like <laughs> nine feet tall. Had very childlike features on his face and short, stubby arms. Yeah. Some sort of cryptid. Yeah. Also, yeah, it should be obvious, but there would be hundreds of other videos of a 10-foot-tall space alien walking the streets of Miami and within the mall itself. Yeah. The, the claims are this are like, uh, the Miami Police Department is going around and forcing people to delete all of the evidence. The, this shit would have been live on the internet instantly. Come on. Be serious. Yeah. So you're telling me that people can capture multiple angles of a, a naked man swimming in a Bass Pro Shop aquarium at closing time, but not a single person got any footage of a 10-foot-tall space alien roaming around a crowded mall in Florida. Come on! And all the believers out there are going to call us haters, but we would love to see the proof of intelligent life as much as anyone else. In fact, we love all the crazy orb shit that's been released in recent years. Yeah. But, but that's not what happened here. No matter what 
the most unhinged corners that Elon Musk presents Twitter.com have to say. Regardless, though, here's Newsweek with more on this outrageous, stupid hoax. Police have released a statement to allay fears of an alien invasion in Florida after a video of a Miami crime scene went viral, with viewers claiming an extraterrestrial had been captured on film. Blurry air, it's not even blurry. Yeah. <laughs> blurry aerial footage of a massive police presence surrounding the Bayside Marketplace Outdoor Mall last Monday night racked up millions of views throughout the week as social media users claimed a 10 foot tall gray alien <laughs> could be seen walking around between the dozens of squad cars. Police said at the time that they were at the scene to apprehend juveniles who were throwing fireworks at each other and looting stores. But several internet users claimed something else was going on. One account on X, formerly Twitter, claimed the footage showed 10 foot alien slash creatures, while another added, I zoomed in on one of the TikTok videos about the Miami mall creature, so you can see the gray creature walking in between these police cars and the building. And nobody reacting in the way you would normally react upon seeing something completely out of this world. Mm -hmm. Literally out of this world. Yeah. Another person who was simply retelling and seemingly punching up other bogus reports posted a video on TikTok where they said, among other things, they seen eight to 10 foot creatures walking down Biscayne Boulevard and walking on Bayside, Ben claims. It said they didn't have no hands. They didn't have no feet, but they was just like, they weren't aggressive. They weren't trying to hurt nobody. Kind of like, looked like they were lost. <laughs> this guy's just making shit up. They were like uh, teleporting and coming back quickly and shape shifting. Yeah, that is crazy. I can't even say not in a crazy way, in such a superior way. They weren't scared of us at all. I don't know who you believe in. What entity, what higher power, but you need to start believing in something, Miami. Because they here. <laughs> just just re- you're making up it, things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, Principal Skinner and uh, Miss Krabappel were in the closet and making were, babies. And they were shapeshifting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and one of the shapeshifters waved at me. And he but, wasn't yeah. scared. Uh, again, yeah. all bullshit. And also, I don't know, potentially dangerous. Because if something worse than teens lighting off fireworks was taking place, getting a bunch of people to rush over to see a space alien, when there was maybe, an, I don't know, an active shooter situation, <laughs> not going to help anyone. Would almost certainly make matters worse. We're trying to evacuate everyone from the area? No, I'm here for the alien. No, let Stop me Stop lying to me. They're trying to hide the alien by saying that there's an active shooter. I'm going to go in and see what's up. Let me see him. Yeah. So yeah, no space aliens in Miami. Also, this is bullshit because as we know, aliens, they're not 10 feet tall. No, they're they're little just guys. little guys. <laughs> <laughs> Harmless little guys yeah. you, could, you could kick if you needed yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, so no space aliens in Miami, but that doesn't mean we might not have visitors sometime soon because scientists recently sent a message through space inviting any intelligent life forms to come on down to Earth and visit Kentucky? Hmm. With the fried chicken? Not sure that would be the first place they would want to go. But then again, you probably wouldn't want aliens, their first time on Earth, dropping yeah. into New York City or Too Dubai much. or something. Too much going on. Yeah, they, they would be overwhelmed. Might fry their brains. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Kentucky it is. All right. Cool. Here's more on this from Gizmodo. The city of Lexington, Kentucky, appears so tired of being overlooked by humankind that it has sent a formal invitation to the next best thing alien life that may or may not exist in a nearby star system. It's a tourism stunt, but the message is very real. The invitation, beamed out last fall via infrared laser towards the TRAPPIST-1 star system, is a project by the Lexington Tourism Bureau. Yeah, we're sending ads to aliens now. According to Visit Lex, they worked with engineers, linguists, and the FAA to make it happen. The target star is 40 light years from Earth, which means any extraterrestrials that are eager to visit the self-proclaimed horse capital of the world will know they are invited in 2063. I would love to be anyone outside of the actual tourism board who is involved in this, who clearly just took their money and uh, aimed one of those green lasers at yeah. the sky and was like, yeah, we... All right, they should be getting the message in around, uh, I don't know, 2063. How old are you guys? Uh, you'll probably be long dead by 2063. Yeah. Uh, that's when they're going to get the message. It's just, Beep, bop, boop. That's how light years work. <laughs> Hackertyper.com. Yes. <laughs> and we're All beaming. Right. <laughs> All right, everyone, great job. That'll be $30,000. And they add that the communication includes a bitmap of prime numbers, elements associated with life, depictions of water, ethanol, and dopamine, horse and human forms, and a landscape. It also includes several images of Lexington and an audio recording by T.D. Young, a blues musician from Lexington. A Visit Lex release addressed to the potential visitors advertises the lush rolling hills, Perfect for landing spacecraft, they claim. 
horses, and bourbon, which the tourism office admits is an acquired taste. It might liquefy your entire body like salt on a slug, they write. We honestly have no idea. I mean, sending them pictures of horses, that's an interesting move, because we've been sending pictures of ourselves the whole time. Yeah, what like, the fuck Ew. is that? But the horse, they're like, holy shit. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Majestic. Would Those you... They must be the ones running things down there. <laughs> I'd like to speak to your... Take your, me to your king. Your king. The one with the giant cock. <laughs> <laughs> the one with the luscious mane. <laughs> yeah. He walks on all fours, and he just drags that giant horse cock around. Yes. But, uh, hey, let's round out today's episode with some news about conservative video sharing platform Rumble. Which is, it's basically, if for some reason, and bless your heart, if you are unaware, it's the right-wing version of YouTube for creators whose content is either too extreme or too edgy or just plain too bigoted well, it's, for other platforms. It's a free speech alternative, but like every free speech alternative, it inevitably gets filled with mostly far-right extremist content. because. Yes. Those are the people who can't simply post on they the other They are one. the users who have been banned from other platforms for reasons unknown. Yeah. Reasons unknown. Uh, now, for an idea of the type of shit that is uh, at least boosted over there, uh, some of their popular creators include Steven Crowder, Andrew Tate, Dan Bongino, and nearly every Republican presidential candidate. All right. Uh, is Vivek posting videos of the throat surgeon herself? What? His wife. Oh, the throat surgeon? Who he refers to as the throat surgeon. Huh. We got a real Nancy Reagan in the works. Yeah. If uh, everything works out the way he wants She's, it to. She, they, they're calling her the throat goat. <laughs> <laughs> Just a weird way to refer to the your throat, wife. My wife, the throat surgeon. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Rumble is now under active investigation by the Securities and Exchange Commission for allegedly, allegedly, potentially defrauding investors by artificially inflating their user and viewership numbers. Which... I think uh, probably obvious to anyone who decided yeah. to take a quick glance at their trending pages or the top videos from the top creators on their site. Uh, but it's still very funny that the SEC is involved and they all might be completely screwed if this turns out to be true. Here's the latest on this from Wired. The SEC confirmed its investigation involving Rumble in response to a public records request that Wired first filed in November seeking documents related to the company. The agency denied Wired's requests on the grounds that related documents were part of an active and ongoing investigation. Confirmation of the probe follows public allegations that Rumble inflated key user metrics, which the company denies. The SEC says that the existence of the probe should not be an indication that any violations of law have occurred with respect to any person, entity, or security. In May 2021, the site was reportedly valued at an estimated $500 million. In September 2022, Rumble became a publicly traded company listed on the NASDAQ as part of a special purpose acquisition company, SPAC deal. Its valuation currently exceeds $1.2 billion. I didn't know they were a publicly traded company. That's weird. And, and uh, seems to be following the trend that, uh, uh, well, most SPACs, but yeah. also the FaZe clan. Yeah, like, pretty we're much. We're worth a billion dollars. Pretty much none of the companies that use the SPAC backdoor to go uh, on the stock market have, Are you uh, sure about that? have done so good since that. It continues, in April 2023, investment research firm Culper Research released a report expressing skepticism about the legitimacy of Rumble's claimed monthly active user counts, a key metric for investors to evaluate the performance of a social media company. Culper Research said it had taken a short position in Rumble, meaning it stands to profit if Rumble's stock price decreases. Combined, the web and app data suggest to us that Rumble has only 38 to 48 million unique users, and the company has overstated its user base by 66% to 108%, Culper Research claimed in its report. Right, bro. That's a lot of percentage. But how are they doing on, uh, what's the term that Elon uses? Unregretted user seconds? Yeah, they're off the charts. Yeah. I mean, we'll have to wait and see how this all shakes out, and we should reiterate that it appears to be an ongoing investigation, so we will use the words that the SEC used. Uh, the existence of the probe should not be any or an indication that any violations of law have occurred with respect to any person, entity, or security. But yeah, I mean, just browsing around on their homepage and even looking at some of the bigger accounts, it doesn't really seem like a company that's worth over a billion dollars. It's a Potemkin village. There's not... There's a lot going on, but not a lot of it's getting Also, what's, what's that Twitch uh, competitor that came out? Kick? Yeah, the people at Kick looking at this news like... Because, mm. yeah, Kick's another one where people are like, these numbers are 
ridiculous. Like, Seem a little inflated. Yeah. Uh, that's an that's an opinion, not a statement of fact. But okay. also, uh, they there I I I, mean, I never go to the site, so I don't know. But there is live streaming on Rumble. There's a bunch of gamers playing games there right now. To and you can say the N word as much as you want. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, anyways, you can say uh, all the gamer words. Yeah. Uh, anyways, make sure you like the video. We're we're doing the thing where we tell you what to do now. You Come like on. the video. You like leave it. a comment. Uh, reply to a comment and be sure to check out our other videos. One of which was copyright struck by Paramount. I fought Paramount and I won. Wait, did it did it go through? Yeah, they I, they they released the the oh. claim today. We fought I, I Paramount. Sent, Paramount. I sent a very sassy message because like you don't fucking own that shit. Eric Adams owns that video, not yeah. you. Yeah. If anybody should be getting paid, it's Eric Adams. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. D- the Paramount struck the video through the Daily Show, yeah. which I'm sure was just. Paramount, like, yeah. mass uploading it was a bunch in of stuff a Daily and claiming. Show episode, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it was very annoying. Anyways, watch that video and our latest uh, news dump video, and make sure you like the video, and we will see you soon for some tech news. And it's, I doubt anything's going to be worth talking about, but it's CES week, baby. Oh, God. See you soon. Bye.